is Oleg, and uh, I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Sweatcoin. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to thank uh, Adrian. I think that if we're creating something for running, I'll probably create Zombies Run, but uh, you guys did first, so we decided to go a little bit more generic. So the story of uh, Sweatcoin uh, is a personal story. Um, a few years ago, um, I went for a run. And uh, a few years before that, I was able to climb some of the highest mountains in the world. And all of a sudden, I'm kilometer three, and I had to stop and grab my chest, and I can only hang on a second, something happened. Literally, in three years, all of my fitness was gone. And I started thinking, why that happened? How come that me, being reasonably young, very early few years before, just in a few years of stressful work, raising a kind of money, doing stuff and stuff, have lost all of my fitness. And uh, my background is in psychology, so my education is psychology and sociology of management. And I started wondering why that happens, and why is such a universal problem. And what you're going to see is a journey um, of some of the discovery. And some of the stuff here you probably know better than me, but I'm so excited about some of the genomics that we're going to talk about and the impacts of movement on genes that uh, um, you know, I just took the golden slide away from you. So we know that uh, there is a strong link between physical activity and chronic inflammation. I think that this is reasonably well understood. I see some people nodding here. Uh, if we need to go into detail, we can do that separately after the, uh, after the presentation. And then the link to a whole battery of different health conditions is also really well documented, and there is plenty of literature on this, starting from cardiovascular diseases and finishing with dementia. However, what I'm mostly excited about recently is the fact that physical activity has a, an anti-aging property. Uh, how many of you have heard or understand telomeres? Interesting. Um, telomeres are the ends or the endings of your chromosomes and they are responsible for um, self-division of your chromosome and making sure that once it's divided its exact replica is created. But what happens with these endings of your chromosome as you age and your chromosomes divide continuously they get shorter and once they get too short your chromosomes can divide anymore, and that leads to aging and ultimately death. If you see an old person, they have thinner hair, they have thinner skin, etc. That is because actually their cells are not able to divide anymore. So there is a very, very strong link between the length of telomeres and your ability to replenish telomeres and aging, and the age that you will have uh, expected age for you to live. And what's even more exciting is there is a direct link between the level of physical activity and the amount of telomerase that your body produces for the length of those endings of your chromosomes. And what's even more interesting is, and this is research is a lot less known, but it's well publicized in kind of medical circles. And let me just explain how to read this. This is the length of your telomere, and the longer it is, the better. And these are four groups of people that participated in this trial. And what you can see is people who don't move, they have a lot shorter telomeres. But also people who move an awful lot also have shorter telomeres. There is a sweet spot of amount of movement that we humans are supposed to have each week in order for us to prolong our life. And this sweet spot is somewhere between 20 to 30 minutes of brisk walking per day to approximately one and a half to two hours of brisk walking per day. So it's not about making people active at whatever cost and making them active endlessly. It is actually about making sure that they have reasonable, continuous and repetitive amount of physical activity on a daily basis. If anybody has any questions to this, we can definitely talk separately um, at the break. But um, that poses a big question. Everyone understands physical activity is valuable, 
So why can't we move more then? And the answer, based on my psychology background, is very simple. Nature doesn't want you to. Nature didn't build you to move. Nature built you to preserve your energy. You were lying next to the fire, waiting for that mammoth to appear, and only then you were running. If you were running aimlessly in between those appearances of mammoth, your tribe would die. So present bias is a bug that is responsible for you effectively to focusing on right here, right now, and either maximizing pleasure or avoiding punishment. But this is the stuff that makes you and me procrastinate. This is the stuff that makes you and me being bad at saving for retirement. This is the stuff that prevents people from quitting smoking because no matter what you put on that cigarette pack, it's not me tomorrow. It's not me the day after tomorrow. And therefore, it's completely neglected. So present bias has only one solution known to man, and nature had to discover it. And it's called instant gratification. And the demonstration of this is best given on the example of another behavior that is badly affected by present bias. It's procreation. Nature had to give us an orgasm in order for us not to screw that up. <laughs> Nature did not give us an orgasm in exchange for exercise. And this is the problem that we're fixing at that point. And, you know, and putting electrodes into people's heads and you know, giving them literally that pleasure is probably something unethical and something that you know, we wouldn't even consider. However, the next best thing would still be rewards, but not the trivial rewards in a way of giving something material, but creating a sense in you that you've been rewarded and each step, each move you make is valuable to you and to other people around you. So how it works, we'll actually get to this in, uh, in consecutive slides. But if you think about sweat point, we are starting as an app, but we are not actually an app. We are a currency. It's, think of it, some of you probably heard of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is effectively backed by electricity. You burn electricity, you create bitcoins. Think of uh, sweat coin, you burn calories, you create sweat coins. That's basic principle that goes into our currency. So we take movement, we track, verify it, and then we convert it into unit that people can exchange for good services and experiences. And very interestingly, quite a lot of people don't want to exchange them because they find them so valuable they sit on them and uh, you know, kind of they, they brag about balances on, the, um, on, on their accounts. And another thing is effectively we are creating a platform for behavior change because we're using that psychological insight of instant gratification to create change in behavior that hasn't been seen before. And Adrian cited uh, Pokemon Go and we looked at their data. Yes, there is a considerable spike, but it only lasts about four to six weeks maximum. And we know that it's a similar duration to uh, people going to a gym. It's a very similar duration to people buying a Fitbit. The average risk life of Fitbit is 42 days. And after that, it either goes into a cabinet, or some people continue wearing it, but it's actually not charged. So what does Smithcoin start with? So we started with a conversion system. So we track your movement, we verify it, and we convert it into sweat coins that you can, you can spend on our marketplace with vendors uh, that accept sweat coins in exchange for their good services and experiences or really, really high levels of discount. The lowest discount that we have in the system is 75%. So this is not something that you can find anywhere by searching for voucher codes. And a lot of goods are actually free. You can also donate to charity using our system. And we also have social element. Who can live without the social element? You know, a bit of leaderboards, uh, a bit of uh, gangs. We, you know, can I have regular conversations with our users. Uh, some guys form the group, and uh, the one at the bottom of the leaderboard at the end of the week buys the round in the pub. <laughs> so we are in three countries right now, and we have about 120,000 uh, users. In nine months, we spend absolute zero on marketing. 
and about half of them were using us last month. So, you know, our retention rates are absolutely incredible because, in fact, it's very, very simple. You download an app, you register, and it starts converting your steps into currency. And then, once a day, a few times a week, or once a month, you come in and you check what you can get for that movement. But the more frequently you come, the more the idea that your movement has value sits in your head and it starts to change people's behavior. And we will see some statistics I'll show you. So we have about 110 vendors that work with us. Um, mostly it would be nutrition, vitamins, supplements. Very clearly, um, you know, very interesting market for them because we target younger, technologically savvy audience. Good for you foods and drinks, and also sports gear, apparel, and services. And this is the behavior change that we observed. So after six months of using, so not six weeks, but six months of using our app, people move 14% more than six months prior to installing our app. So it is sustainable change that we're able to deliver. Another thing that uh, I wanted to brag about, and I mentioned this, uh, is our levels of retention. In fact, this graph is a little bit dated. So if you look at the average health and fitness apps, they would be retaining at day 30 approximately 4 to 5% of their users. We're now retaining about 25% of our users. So one out of four, 30 days later, will continue to open us every day. So what are the elements uh, in our toolkit that we're using to change the game and deliver it um, as sustained change? Well, we talked about instant notification. Another aspect that is very important for us is we're not trying to create new behavior. We're not trying to make people all of a sudden start going to the gym. And probably all of us being in a situation that in February you're wondering how you can actually cancel the gym membership that you got in early Jan. So trying to make drastic changes in people's lives is a lot harder, and we learned that. Nudging is a lot easier. So let's take behavior that 99.9% .9 of us exhibit every day, taking steps. How can we make sure that people take one more, two more, or 15% more each day? So we are not going for runners only. We believe that this should be inclusive. And another aspect of our service is we very quickly discovered that as soon as we use word sport, or fitness, or running, approximately 85% of people would, they wouldn't necessarily leave, but they would switch off. That would, they, those are not the words for them. They are not associating themselves with being sporty. They are not keen on kind of going into fitness class. However, each and one of them is walking every day. And this is probably the biggest calorie burn or the biggest exercise that they're already taking. And actually nudging them to take more of that is the best way forward. Rewarding behavior, not changing behavior. So we are having, in some of the conversations with local councils uh, and some companies, where they're asking us if we can reward change in behavior from one month to another. And our position is, if this was the right approach, then our salaries per month would also not be paid on a monthly basis, but on the increase of our productivity from last month. And we know that it wouldn't be really, really productive. And the motivation and our engagement would actually go down. So it is a lot better to just focus on the right behavior and start rewarding it, because if every step is valuable, you will automatically start taking more of them as opposed to being rewarded handsomely for an increase. Because another flip side of focusing on increasing change would be that one month people would walk a lot, in other months they would walk very little. Because then, on month three, they will have again the increase that they'll be rewarded for. So we're creating externalities that we're not really interested in because all we want is continuous walking or brisk walking, 20 to 30 minutes a day would already make a heck of a lot of people healthier and living longer. Another aspect is rewarding and surprise. I didn't talk about it, but you know, my psychology background, I was really fascinated with neurotransmitters, uh, dopamine and oxytocin. One of the most powerful things in building uh, kind of behavior change 
is creating this dopamine loop, where when if I open my app right now, select so one, the screen would light up and would show me in animated fashion how many steps I've taken since I last looked at it and how many sweat coins were generated. You know, this is a very, very small thing that uh, casinos are using in their one hour bandit. You actually feel good about every single step you took. You know, and this is using that insight not to extract money out of people, but to actually make them feel good about moving. So let's use that insight and change behavior that is really good for people, as opposed to, you know, continue making them poorer. App experience a great dopamine oxytocin loop. I just described to you, you know, kind of every element of our UX UI is designed to make sure that you feel good about movement and you put more of it into your day-to-day -day life. Leaderboards, um, very important element, but only about 30% of our users are interested in it because it would be, it would seem that there are two types of people. People who are very interested in kind of their um, in, in them and themselves, and they're very focused on effectively competing with themselves, and they change people's behavior. And then there are people who are very social. For them, leaderboards are valuable. So if you go down the path of leaderboards, just be aware that it would only tackle about 30% of audiences, and typically has more appeal to male than female audiences. And the last one is family and relevant communication. Uh, we use push notifications in our app that are really engaging. You know, you just put a new offer out and you can afford it. You can actually just buy the one click. You know, very exciting thing. If somebody added you to the leaderboard so that you can check out who that is and that, uh, add them back. Um, if I transfer you coins, you also get the notification. And that's really exciting as well to see who is that and why, because there are messages attached to every single transfer. So, key platform benefits is positive community engagement. People come and check uh, the Sweatcoin app three times a day. In the morning, because there is a new offer every day at 8 o'clock. At lunchtime, to see what's uh, new and exciting and how, much, uh, how many steps people have taken. And the most exciting for me, and the one that we're really fighting for, is when you leave the office people check the kind of status of the day because that's the one that changes behavior because all of a sudden the pressure of the day is off and people take different route home. They skip buses, they walk a lot more on the way home and take longer routes. And Adrian used a powerful uh, tool that I'm going to steal from him. Sorry, Adrian, you know, putting some of the tweets. Next time I'm going uh, to have some of those uh, uh, quotes from our users. Because yeah, we do change behavior and they're quite vocal about it. So thoughts on how we can work or help you. And we're having some of the conversations already um, underway uh, with uh, one particular council. They came to us because they have a problem with a uh, young female uh, population, uh, especially associated with council housing, uh, low high levels of depression and high obesity rates. And we're discussing with them if all these audiences, this council, can convert their sweat points into discounts on their council rent. So, you know, the idea is to get them out, to get them walking, and we know, and all of us know, that you know, more active person, it's a very positive impact on the um, on the um, mental health as well as physical well-being. And uh, we know that there are plenty of kind of issues around that. But we're really, really, really excited about this uh, kind of as an idea or the use or use case for step points. Because one of the things that was important to them was gaming. Because clearly, you know, if you could generate sweat points by sitting in front of TV, beer in one hand, and uh, you know, phone in another, and shake your phone and generate sweat points, that wouldn't work really well. But we spent nine months building our algorithms that are impossible to gain. So you will have to walk in order to generate those sweat points. So three options here are a customized app. Effectively, we can just take our, you know, kind of our algorithm and build something specifically bespoke for you and your audiences. A little simpler approach is to uh, include you into our existing app, 
where your local residents and your local vendors will be able to connect with each other. And you can change behavior of your local um, population and also get that high street excited. So, you know, we haven't done that yet, but we are having um, sort of several conversations on the go, and this is a very exciting aspect. And of course, the last but not least, um, you know, kind of having cryptocurrency backed by sweat is uh, uh, something that press likes. So, if we do something like this and we start accepting it, you know, as effectively a local tax or an opportunity to reduce your local tax, you know, I can tell that this is going to be uh, an amazing PR story and press all over it and ship soon. And this is an example of what we've done with one vendor. Um, you know, literally they were on the platform for less than a day and they had 20, nearly 22,000 people looking at them. 1,700 people getting engaged with their offer and uh, um, they got 426 uh, satellites. So if we're talking about tight geographic population, you know, probably this can turn into uh, uh, getting into, into the door of uh, that shop on the high street. Thank you very much.